Hello, Internet! Welcome to episode 243 of the Assorted Calibers podcast, the second minute podcast. There's a little bit for everyone. I'm Weird Beard, and tonight, Aaron Paulette is on assignment. And honestly speaking, we had a lot of news, so I said, let's have an ACP roundtable. And so tonight on the roundtable, we have the illustrious David. Hello. I got a new toy. You do. We will talk about this promptly. We have the, uh, he's somewhat illustrious, Oddball. Hello. <laughs> like shine Oh, come on. Somewhat <laughs> illustrious? How many people do you know with an Altor? He is he is <laughs> lustrous as shine on a sneaker. <laughs> and making his wow. triumphant return to the ACP show, the Trunk Monkey Steve. How you doing, Steve? I'm good. How do you doodle, everybody? Where where are you coming from? You you said you were going for a, ho- a hotel room. Yeah, I'm I'm on assignment uh, up north. Uh, I'll be I'll be back at the homestead probably in the next day or so, depending on uh, how well the case goes tomorrow. Yeah, oh, and you, right, you, sounds like you have quite a clutch set up, and it actually sounds pretty darn good. So so uh, yeah, I, I'm pleased. no feedback, and I'm not recording from my car. So yes, those are all bonus. I, though I I I gotta say I am absolutely had had a love a, a a very very interesting relationship with the scrubbing the road noise and crap off of your off of your very very dirty audio like it was what yeah, I was like, you you loved it but it, you pulled your hair out yeah well there was a there was a couple of bad ones where it was one of those like all right what do I do do I do I leave it really really dirty or do I make it really really clean but scraping that much dirt off of it it doesn't sound like Steve <laughs> never know you liked the challenge yes all right so let, let's let's we we have got a ton of news like we uh i will say right now oddball and david both had uh, submitted segments and so it was going to uh uh it was going to be going uh uh it was going to be going going quite quite, quite smoothly for a show and i'm like oh but as i was building up the show it's like one of those like oh man there's a lot of like current events and unfortunately there's more current events we will we will we will, yeah. we will discuss and but uh, i i do need to point something out that is very important because you are probably never going to get a segment from oddball again <laughs> because the last three times he has had a segment submitted and ready something has happened to the show this is true so he now feels like a confirmed jinx. What, what was what was the last time? When you and Aaron went on sabbatical. Ah. And then there was one before that. Mm-hmm. So, do it, yeah, do I don't you... know if he's going to try again. He'll try. No I, just, I just, I've no just, I've just learned the, tr- the trick. The trick is to start poking oddball on Friday. <laughs> just gently. <laughs> of, the, of the prior week. Yeah. Cause, cause otherwise it's, otherwise it's 9 PM on a Sunday and oddball goes, Oh yeah, I was supposed to make a segment. Wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. But so, uh, yeah, the, the, the Aaron, Aaron, Aaron is having a, a quite a Monday for, for, for many reasons. And I'm just like, you know what? We have got so much news. We could easily make this into a round table. And then quickly the, 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 the round table people came through. Unfortunately, Liberty was on and she was going to, going, going to stick through with it, but she's having like, she was having mic difficulties. And so, which is weird. Cause usually she's having Matthew difficulties. <laughs> hey, oh, <laughs> sorry, man. I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> I'm, I'm a done. Weak man. I'm done. <laughs> but either way, Aaron was Aaron was very very pleased for when I said, you know what, if you want to take the night off, you can't. Just like, oh, thank you, and uh, and then uh, and then yeah, we've got we've got the other gang on, and again, I want to thank David and Oddball for submitting segments on time, and then me pushing it, going okay, <laughs> we, let's let's bump it to next week, so you will hear their lovely segments next week, barring any yeah, other we- events. I don't know what Oddball did, but mine was certainly not time sensitive. No, 
Uh, yeah, mine wasn't uh, either. Uh, Oddballs was not time sensitive because it is it is an answer to 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 a discussion we've been having for what like six months now. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And mine was in response to, uh, I think, three back of Matthew's guest posts when he was talking about long distance shooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So, uh, David, what did what, what, you bring for show and tell? Say it right. What did you do? <laughs> David, what Thank did you, you do? <laughs> well, it doesn't say made in Tennessee on it. Oh, but it's, it, was still, it was still made in Springfield? Yeah, it's they hard. haven't. Yeah, they haven't started production in in uh, Maryville yet. It's supposed to be September. But th sadly. this 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 item will absolutely be made in Tennessee because that is. Oh yeah, that's, because Massachusetts mm, oh, won't yeah. let them. In, in the well, short, near future. at the time they're letting at letting them, but boy, they're, they're threatening to do it. So they yeah, they're going to be they're going to be first. They're going to be keeping the the plant in Springfield open for the time being, though I believe that that time is limited. Uh, and then yep. they're, and and they're going to be moving essentially all the modern stuff to Tennessee. So yep, ev everything. Yes, I believe the 1911s are staying in Springfield for the time being, along with the revolvers. Yeah, the 1911s, the revolvers are stay staying in Springfield. But anything that says yep. M and P on it is uh, is is going to yep. be is going to be moving to Tennessee. Yeah, uh, I was talking with one of the guys who's working at the new plant because they came in to do the. Uh, some photos on our range because they're like 15 minutes away from us. And he said that this, he told me that 1911 revolvers are staying in Springfield for now, but eventually the plan is to move everything out. And who knows how long that will be because moving that kind of production facility is bloody expensive. Holy crap. Oh yeah. But yes, but this still says Springfield, Massachusetts on it, but I had to do it anyway. I had to get an M and P FPC, the side folding, a uh, nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine. Very nice. Yes. I found out that uh, this is the third one that they've gotten in. They actually got three more today, but this was the first of those three. The other two showed up one at a time, came in, went out, same day. It's just a shame that it didn't happen, you know, last week. Right. <laughs> I, I but, stopped but, at his place. Uh <laughs> On the way home from a destination wedding last week, and as I've mentioned, the uh, the muzzle is threaded, and I am actually waiting for the uh, the feds to finally get around to completing my paperwork on a uh, an accessory item. I've seen it, I've held it, I I've fondled it, but I can't take it home yet. It's still in prison. How many days are you at uh, waiting? Um, when did I submit that? I think I, I, I either submit it in uh, early October or early December. So it hasn't been that long in the grand scheme of things, but it's been way too long. <laughs> you know, three days is too long, but I think, uh, I think silencer yeah. shop is talking about four and fours. They're at about 230 to 260 days. Yeah. I they think. were last I saw, they were saying eight to nine months was yeah. the average. Sounds about right. But I did do it through Silencer Shop, so I am going to check what they have to say. Because the ATF, I found out from talking to some folks, oh, yeah, they don't update that website until you're basically done. Okay. Like, well, that's, thankfully, th that's helpful. And thankfully, I'm <laughs> Tyranny! dependent on them. But oh, you, you they... wanted them to be helpful. Well, <laughs> I, oh, I'm, no, I don't want them to be helpful. I want them to do their jobs. <sighs> You know, there's, they had this whole website that they're supposed to update. So, yes, this was submitted on December 5th. Okay. So it hasn't been tremendously long in the grand scheme of Form 4s. It's right. also a trust Form 4. Okay. So it's myself and my wife. But if I go to the, uh, the ATF eForms and log in, I get no additional information. Of course not. Or I mean, let me just say I, I I did not in the past, but yeah. So the, if you go there and you go to submitted in process, well, first of all, I don't know what's the back end of this website, but it is it takes like a minute when you click on one of the links to actually show the results, and ta da, nothing. <laughs> there we are. But yeah, so I I just got it today. I got it home. 
and I've entered it into my firearms database, and I've fiddled with it. I had an old, well, not old, old, but an older uh, red dot that I have popped on the rail just because I want to be able to, you know, aim things and having a red dot. I should probably get either a riser or a different red dot on this because I am getting... Um, you're banging something around, David. Uh, uh, yeah, I just you... I just shouldered it and I hit it against the microphone. Sorry. Oh, okay. I will be I will, but... be, I will be fixing that in post. <laughs> Hopefully, apologies to anybody on, on on the parts I wasn't able to scrape off. But so I put this red dot on, but I'll probably need to get a riser or a different red dot because when I shoulder it, um, it has to come way up on my cheekbone. Well, I mean, just looking at the uh, looking at the rail and. You know the actual action. There's a that's what a quarter inch rise on the rail from the yeah, pretty much maybe half. Yeah, I believe that it's supposed to be similar to a uh, flat top AR rail height. Not exact, but similar. So right. you know, optics and risers will be compatible. Okay. One of the neat things though is when it's folded, there is a notch on one wing of the charging handle that interfaces with one of the slots on the forend. So when it's folded, it's locked folded. Okay. And you just have to, I mean, you don't have to pull the charging handle back a little bit, but it's, you know, polymer on polymer. So you want to. <laughs> right. But, man, I, I do wonder if they are uh, challenging Keltec for their fastener. Uh, <laughs> for the screw count? <laughs> I mean, like I said, uh, the, the pistol grip is a standard M&P pistol grip, so it has no screws. But behind the uh, between the bolt and the charging handle, there are six screws, three on either side, and 16 on the forend. <laughs> uh, just think of the amount of Loctite they go through. Yeah. Well, these are, uh, from the looks of them, they are the... Uh, the self-securing nylon screws. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good luck with that. I just don't understand is for the forend why they didn't go with a, an attachment point at the at the chamber area so they could use their existing free float forends that they have for their ARs. They more just, accessories to buy. More well, bullshit. it's more manufacturing process for them. And if they had gone with just a, a standard attachment point and this that that same forend because this forend is not free float it's contacting the barrel at the base and then one two three four five six spacers up its length which doesn't make sense well neither does caltech when he does when they design weapons it's all like how many doing... lines of coke can we do and then come up with a gun exactly. all inside of 24 hours? Yeah, that's the, that's the point. Is Caltech is doing all the meth, so of course it's not going to make sense. Last <laughs> I heard, Smith & Wesson isn't doing nearly that much meth. Well, I mean, they are moving to Tennessee, so... Zing! I mean, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So... So tomorrow uh, I will be giving it a a quick wipe down and a test fire. Hooray! What do you what are you going to put for 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 an optic on it? Uh, right now, like I said, I've just got this uh, inexpensive red dot that I've had lying around for a while, and then after after I do some test fire, I'll see. Do I want to keep that red dot, which was uh, all of free dollars because somebody left it at. Uh, at work after they had a gun worked on, so they gave it to me. It's kind of beat up. I, I, I gotta say I have a really, really nice um it might it might it might be a little overkill for uh for the uh uh for that, but I have a uh, true glow two X red dot and you have my address. I'm I do. I do. Well I, I send I send you things. I, I, I also made fr friends with the marketing director of the company that owns them, so We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> we will, we will talk, but yeah, uh, but yeah, but the, uh, I, I, I really like that because it's a, it's a red dot. So it's got the unlimited eye relief, but it's got a little magnification on it. And so, but not, a, n not so much that you can still shoot it with both eyes open and it doesn't 
seem strange or weird or wa- does it doesn't do wonky things to your visual feel. It's still very intuitive. Um, but it has a little bit of magnification on it, which definitely helps for, for reaching out a little bit further. Yeah. I mean, nine millimeter PCC, I'm not gonna be reaching out all that far, no. but right. Yeah. After, uh, yeah. After uh, what, what's, what you get, what you get out past a hundred yards, like, yeah, you're, 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 you're aiming feet above your target. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta break out the grenade launcher sights. Uh, I mean, it does have that um, standard M lock four end, so I could probably mount a flare launcher under the barrel, or a can launcher. Yeah, or you know, get replicas of like the Mosin Nagant ladder sights that flip up for oh, two thousand meters. If I'm gonna do that, it's it's gonna get an anti aircraft spider sight. <laughs> yeah, I love the spider. Uh, yeah, I've actually downloaded from thingiverse a, a few uh examples of that just to play with oh you got to put a spider sight on it just j- just for the lulls before <laughs> uh and you, you, need, you need to put a spider sight and you need to and you need to 3d print a um uh a a, a, a bren gun flash hider because bren gun flash hiders make everything better hmm so, Steve, do you do you do you, do you have any, any any other Sorry. events besides the fact that you're uh, that you're you're on assignment in in the in the UP? Well, no, not really. I'm I'm not technically in the UP. I'm I'm still in the Lower Peninsula, but I'm sufficiently up north that we got snowed on again, and it was a nice icy trip up here a couple of days ago. Yikes! So you still yeah, rocking the Subaru? Now, so is the Subaru still your ninja wagon, or did you get something else? No, Subaru is uh, still the the beast of choice. Nice. And I'm waiting to see what the uh, auto market does while the value of the dollar plummets, and you know dealerships can't convince you to pay sticker for a new car, so they decide yeah. to charge you twice the sticker. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And admittedly, of- I've been uh, pondering actually getting out of the business. But that's neither here nor there. Oh. 20 years and 8,000 miles a month, you know, it, it, it wears on you eventually. And I, yeah. I think I've finally come to the uh, end of my patience with the business. Plus you have so, a nice little, nice yeah. little home life. And that's a, that, 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 that's a sucky thing to be on the road, a road with that, with yeah. that waiting for you. Yeah, it is. Um, another interesting development, uh, Unicorn and I are actually going to be foster parents. Ooh, so, nice. Oh. Nice. So we've been we've been going through that paperwork and all the assorted state associated bullshit since August of last year. But uh, later this week we have our final like Zoom conference and we we work with a panel of other foster parents and we have a nice little sit down discussion for a couple hours and and then we're we're signed. I mean we're technically already signed off on by the state and then you know. Wind up with a CPS agent probably dropping off a kid at us at our at our house in the in the near term. We don't know when or how, um, but but that's that's about the only other major development. You know, that's a pretty major development. It is. It is. Um, and and pulling the youngest one out of school. Uh, we're probably going to do the homeschool thing. I mean, I, I guess that was all part and parcel of. Winding up and moving out to the country. Everything is yep. just going crazy. Oh, and, and we have chickens now. So Ooh. nice. Yeah. So, so if you follow me on Facebook, you know, there, you know, the, the unicorn has been uh, posting photos of the chickens that we currently have sitting in a little basket in the kitchen until they're <laughs> old enough and it's warm enough for them to go outside. Nice. Oh, you're going to, you're going to get me on Facebook just for that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, she's little, little, of... little baby chickens, weird. Little baby chickens. Yeah, we we thought about ducks, and you know, I, I thought I thought about weird, and then you know, my wife and, and I then decided about, after we're thinking we're... about weird, decided ducks would be a bad idea. Yeah, that. Well, yes. I mean, she doesn't really know weird, but she knows of weird, and that was enough. She, she's like duck shit everywhere, and I was like, mm, so does so does weird, you know? <laughs> Wait, and chickens don't. I was going to follow up with that as well. Yeah. Well, the, the ducks are 
you know, a, a lot more messy, and we do have a pool. They are a, Duck, they are a lot more messy. I, I Duck will say this is much gooier and stinkier. Yes. Okay. And then, of course, the unicorn found out that chickens can actually swim. But she was a lot less stressed about perhaps, you know, an idiot bird not drowning in the backyard pool. You know what? That answers a question. I really did want to throw a chicken into a pool. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm sure did. when they're old enough, we'll probably have video, and you know, I'll I'll share it on the Discord or something like that, so you can prevent having to wander back to Feces Book and Zuckernut. No, make him go to Feces Book, just for the yeah. lols. Just for the lol. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I can. I, I think. I think we can manage. I think we can manage. Love you, weird. <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, that's that's good Ooh. to hear. Maybe, may, maybe a segment on chicken keeping once 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 you become more established, Steve. Um, the 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 chickens are are not my thing. They are not my endeavor. They are they are the unicorn. Maybe I have her do a guest post or something. I, I would actually I, totally. I, ever, ever 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 since I first met her online, we've never met in person. Uh, but yep. ever since I first met her online, I've wanted to have her on the show. Actually. Um, Steve, if you could have her do a guest post for blue collar prepping on managing chickens, maybe a series of shorter posts, that would be great. She, she's not a fan of writing, uh, especially explaining things and writing things out. She, she gets frustrated. Yeah. But, well, um, I mean, if she does like a, an audio segment, just talking stream of consciousness, it could be transcribed and then you could, you could add I it will... or she could edit. When that's, I when that's land back at the homestead, I'll uh, I'll I'll bring that up. I'll, I'll I'll bring that up when I get back to the homestead yep. in the next couple of days. We'll give her something to think about while we ponder and we set up homeschooling for the youngest too. I I can't believe we're doing that too. But you know another another reason to pull myself out of the field and uh, you know focus more on stuff closer sure. to home. Which I mean I'm not complaining about. I've you know. Merchant of Boom is slowly chugging along. It's not Good. it's not perfect yet, but how old is the youngest? She will be seven in May. She will be seven in May. Okay. So right now we're midway through first grade. Right. But uh I you know, can just imagine the, the physics lessons you'll come up with. <laughs> oh we're yeah, there 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 are plenty. There there are plenty already already in the pipe. <laughs> all right well shall we get into our topics fire away weird yeah uh let's hear do we want to start with the depressing one first or? yeah do you do you want do you want to take an oddball because you're you you are the yeah. closest in proximity yeah uh so by the time you hear this show you've probably heard a ton about it uh as of recording uh we are recording on the night that oh. uh the the that it happened um there was a school shooting um in nashville um and in fact uh in uh the area town that i grew up in and uh Pony and i uh for about a year lived pretty much across the street from where this school is um i uh, a woman uh approximately tw- a white a white woman approximately 28 years old decided uh for whatever reason it would be a good idea to go to a small uh christian private school uh uh covenant school uh and start shooting up the place uh and some reports um, are saying she was a student of that school when she was uh, young, yeah, but, but again, th- this this school is a pre-K to sixth grade school, and right. the shooter was twenty-eight. Yeah, uh, so it, it's it's not like other just, yeah. school shootings where oh yeah the stu- the the shooter was a student that had just gotten tossed out or was a current student or, or whatever. I mean, there, there was what, uh, 20 years in between her no longer being at that school and, and deciding to go back up and go, go back there and start shooting people. Um, and, uh, unfortunately, 
three members of the staff have been killed and uh, three uh, students. I'm, I'm seeing that uh, all three students were nine years old, which it would make sense that uh, they were probably in the same class. Um, yeah. Yeah. And when, when I say that this is a small school, I mean, I, 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 I like think the entire or something the the entire population of the school is like 200 kids oh okay it's, yeah um uh and there wasn't a resource officer there because it's it, it's a tiny uh private school um but the Nashville PD uh responded quickly uh got there I, th- I think the fire department actually got there first, but whatever. Um, but the, the Nashville PD got there, uh, charged in, um, confronted the shooter, and shot her dead. Um, and uh, fortunately, one of the officers was injured in that he got cut on some broken glass, but uh, very minor injuries to him. So the the in this case the police absolutely did what they were supposed to do. They they uh charged the uh charged the shooter and and took her out before she could do any more damage. Uh, uh, yeah. Amazing how it works when they actually follow the protocols. There's a reason why yeah the FBI after doing years and years of research on on, on uh, active shooters has d- determined it's, it's pretty that, much been the standard since post Columbine, right? Um, I, th- I think it was a few years before it became official. That was certainly something that was heavily talked about after Columbine. Mm-hmm. Cause of course, for those that they don't know when, when the Columbine, uh, attack, which itself wasn't a school shooting, it was a failed bombing that, that right, right. And plan B was just shoot as many people as we can. The police just assumed that uh, that it was a terrorist attack and that they had a list of demands. And so they just kept calling the phones in the school, trying to get a hold of them to figure out what what they wanted and why they were doing it. And it was only later that they realized that, oh, no, they were just there to kill all the people. And yep, so right. uh, and so it, it after a while and the, there might have been some copycats that went through for it to officially become. Uh, oh, there we'll, were definitely some copycats. Yeah, but oh yeah, it, it is it is well established that the general protocol is that if there is a uh, if there is an active shooter, um, engage them ASAP because yep. almost always the moment they start taking incoming fire, things got start getting a whole lot better from everybody, and that's law enforcement. Yeah, it, it, it breaks their fantasy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's mm. private citizens. Yeah, they, I mean, just by nature, they they choose soft targets. This was a gun free zone, like many, many, many of the other spree shooting locations. The vast, vast majority. The vast, of, vast majority. Of, yeah, I, right. I think it's like what that it's like three percent were not or something like that. Uh it's it is a. I, I I did this for for the gun blog variety cast ages ago. I should really redo the numbers and see if I can find the uh, the FBI list. But I actually went through all of the FBI listed spree shootings since I think since Columbine, and found that it was something like seventy percent of them were in gun free zones. And then there was kind of an ah okay, so not there was an three percent, thirty percent. There was and there was yeah, there was an additional like ten percent that were in extremely gun unfriendly zones you know so you know the 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 issue of you know is if it's in you know massachusetts or new york or california or all of that where it's not specifically a posted gun free zone but how the people are going to be carrying a gun if if permits are very very hard to come by right right uh and and of course um you know the reports are that um the shooter did use two uh walked in with two quote assault style rifles and a pistol um so of course you know we we have a bunch of people doing the usual cries for bands of assault weapons etc cetera, etc cetera. one of which uh, was joe biden 
who uh, right. I should actually I, I, sh- I should actually try to dig up the uh, the press conference that he did because he came out like I was actually listening to it. Um, I was actually lis- listening to the radio. It, it happened just as I was picking my daughter up from school, and I, so I was walking up the street to to the school, and my, the, the 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 radio station I was listening to cut over to his to the to the to the, to the White House live feed. And he was he was laughing and joking with the crowd and 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 ogling the children per per use. I'll just leave it at that. This is a this is this is a round table, uh, not a yep. bag dump. But uh, but yeah, jokety jokety jokety. And then suddenly put on the serious voice and started talking about how I mean, Joe Biden will tell anyone who will listen that he wants to ban assault weapons. Uh, so, Even right. though he can't define them because no one can. No, no uh, he, he can't define them. He doesn't really know what they are. He doesn't really care. And honestly speaking, he's not getting any traction because the, 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 we've, try, we've tried what uh, twice now since he's been president and they, it's died in committee. Well, and in this case, honestly, she could have been using a revolver. And yep, she killed six people. She could have shot each one of them once. Right. She, and she was. She was. She. She. She killed considerably less people than the than than the Virginia Tech shooter that only used a pair of pistols. Right. With ten round magazine. With ten round mags. Yeah. Um. But yeah. The uh. Like I said, you know, th- this it, it does shake me up a bit because, well, you know, the the church that was the spot that the parents of the kids that weren't the ones that went to the hospital um, were picking up their their kids. Were uh, the, yeah, that's that's the church that um, my Cub Scout ten <laughs> mad at. So um, yeah, but yeah. So so and and of course you know our our hearts go out to. Mm-hmm. Everyone involved, and with a school that small, that means that everybody knew each other. So it's it's not just the the families; it's it's also mm-hmm. everybody else. Um, I kind of find myself wondering if President Biden started going off about assault weapons before all the families had been notified. Uh, I don't think so. Um, the I, I think the the families were notified rather quickly. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it yeah. Was- it was it was in the what what time what time did this start? Do you know? Uh ten thirty this morning, yeah. uh, central time. And so it was it was it was uh it was almost three o'clock when uh, when Biden came on. So he he gave it a little bit of time, but not much time. And like I said, we're not talking about a lot of the details on this, and uh, I'm sure you guys have heard a bunch of a, a bunch of details, and they may be much more confirmed. But at this point, they are not. Uh, and, for, for, and of course, we are not going to do any kind of supposition. Yes, and uh, I, I yeah. will. I will just say some of the unconfirmed details that uh, that we are hearing are a, a you know a, a little bit different from some of the other ones and i will just say that um we no matter what the case we still need to be careful of not glorifying the shooter because again so many of these are <coughs> copycats and the police have have officially stated that there is a manifesto and and uh planning documents that were left behind by the shooter so that we will have stuff to review. And I, I will say every time there's been a manifesto or a document or a video left behind, because I, I am a reporter for the assorted calibers podcast. I do, I do, I do view those things and I hate doing it. It sucks. Um, I read the I read the 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 Aurora Colorado shooters journal just before I went to bed. I was writing a I was writing I can't remember if I was, I was writing a fisk or something, but I was working on something to cover the uh, um, some of the information about that. And then I read it and just got tired and just said, "I'm too tired. I need to go to bed." Don't read a friggin' manifesto from these insane people before going to bed. Just, oh yeah. yeah, not a good no, idea. 
Uh, That'll mess with you. Yeah, no, it was uh, that was not a good night's sleep. Uh, but yeah, this. Uh, but yeah, so I'll we'll we'll be we will be covering this more next week on ACP because. At, again, at this point in time, we are recording this on the evening of the 27th. It is still very, very fresh. And these bodies yeah, aren't it's, even. It's the day of. So, yeah. And these yeah. bodies aren't even cold yet. So let's 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 let the families grieve their loss. Let's let the jackals be jackals. And we are going to come back when we actually know what we are talking about. All I will just say is that um, some of the. Some of the natures, uh, some some people you may be found, you may be somebody who uh, isn't willing to post pictures of the killer or or, or name the killer uh, in your social media posts and things like that. Uh, this is this is no different, and I'm sure the the manifesto will have references to other killers. Uh, in it and we just we we want to create as minimal profile as possible and i will have to say the the news media has been very very good about uh keeping the killer's name down to minimum mm -hmm. well considering some of the other elements reported i'm curious about why mm. um again not going to get into that not doing any kind of official show supposition but We've all seen situations where there's been a shooting and the media starts blowing it up and then it doesn't fit their narrative, so they memory hole it. Yes. And I'm wondering if with some of the things that have been mentioned about this shooting, if they're just hedging. Yeah. Well, I, I know there has been some pressure on the media to uh, stop naming the shooter. Yeah. Um, I, for me, still the worst one was Rolling Stone putting one of the Boston Marathon bombers on their cover like a rock star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that was just obscene. Yeah. All right, so I th I think have we have we covered that enough cuz there's we, <laughs> maybe yeah. too much. Yeah, we yeah. let's let, let let us uplift because let me tell you the rest of the, the rest of the stuff that uh that that uh that I dug up uh, for the uh, for, for the show is uh, is a lot uh, better. Um, so this first one, actually, this one was presented by Aaron, and I don't know if you guys know New Jersey gun laws well enough to know exactly what's going on here. Uh, that's the one thing that this article wasn't super clear about. I I no nowhere I uh, uh, nowhere near an expert on them. I. I'm somewhat familiar just because I have friends who live there, but let me just pull up and I didn't read the article. So let me just give it a quick skim. Yeah. I, 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 I will say that I, I, I've, uh, I contacted Tony Simon a little while ago to try to get him on the, get him on the show. And, uh, I, one of the things I want to have him on is just, Hey, Tony, tell me about New Jersey gun laws because California and New York. And of course I live in Massachusetts. So those, those States get a lot more play on what their gun laws are and, you know, Florida and Texas. Oh yes. I, I had heard about this. So basically, uh, it was New Jersey playing silly buggers with people who already had, uh, handgun permit not carry but possession permits uh -huh. and if they applied for because they had to get a, a, a approval for each separate handgun on that permit kind of like new york as well uh, but if they if they applied for an additional handgun or according to the article even in cases where they requested a duplicate card id card and they were denied if they appealed, if they dared to question their betters' denial of their rights, the, uh, the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office and others would file forfeiture motions for any firearms that they already possessed. So I'd like to get another handgun. No, you can't. Why? You know what? We're taking all your guns now. And this ruling... Uh, blah, 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 the New Jersey Appellate Division issued a published opinion finding that courts hearing firearm permit appeals may not order the seizure and forfeiture of firearms already possessed. I, I don't know what level of force that has, but 
that's a that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope that 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 is that is solidly good news and yeah I I like that especially it's going through like I know I remember seeing a um... oh sorry I was just reading further down and one of the lines in the article and I think this is a quote from the judge's decision in Bruin and Heller the U S Supreme Court also ruled that when it comes to the individual right to keep and bear arms courts may not apply a balancing test. <laughs> That's a nice, solid spank right there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Government, uh, here's, here it is. Government may not simply posit that the regulation promotes an important interest. Rather, the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation. Only if a firearm regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition may a court conclude that individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. That was from the Supreme Court decision. But I'm not sure if the other part was from the actual um, appellate division of New Jersey. I mean, and either yeah, way, it is, it is a good spank. And let's let's be honest. The the past balancing tests that have been done, which of course is the courts balancing uh, public public safety and public need with with the civil rights, has always been crap. Given the fact that hey. What are the safest states in the union? Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont are at the top of the list. And I will then point out, actually, New Jersey is frequently la- la- uh, That's so. yeah, li- listed as listed as what are, what what are the what are the safest, which, you know, which other than Camden. <laughs> well, that that's an interesting case study. I think I mean, I think it really shows that, like, the population density of New Jersey really works in its favor. And the fact that you have places like Camden, Newark and Trenton, which are extremely dangerous places. But outside of that, a lot of the, the, the other places are not so bad. Um, and so yeah, or like with Tennessee, Memphis. Yes. Right. And so because, you know, because of that, it actually and and because there are so many people living in areas outside of, you know, outside of those, you know, those 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 major cities that it uh, that uh, it does allow them to be considered a a safer place, uh, despite, you know, having a massive violent crime problem in yeah, yeah, Camden, Newark, Trenton. Right. Um, of course, then there's also uh, New York, mm-hmm. where in addition to the other issues, as folks who worked for New York State Department of Criminal Justice's services told me on multiple occasions, New York handles that by simply New York City not reporting the data to the state agency. That is that is very much true. So, yeah. Oh no, no, we don't have a violence problem. Look at the, look at the data. You didn't report the data. See that that was actually a. Uh, in it was it during Michael Bloomberg's last term there was a a, a you mean his st- illegal third term correct okay <laughs> just just wanted to make sure we're talking about the same yep, thing yep yep yeah, yeah Michael <laughs> Michael Bloomberg served three terms as mayor uh, mayors are limited term limited to uh, to two terms but there was an mm-hmm. injunction put through and it only applies to Michael Bloomberg yes it was it wasn't it would make sense if he got term limits repealed before he ran for a third term that'd be fine. Nope. But no, he didn't. It's just the town council said that he could run for he, he could he could run for one more term, mm-hmm. and they did that retroactively. Yes, yeah, he was already running for his third term when they said, "Yeah, no, no, this is okay." Mm-hmm. But uh-huh. but yeah, but he there was there was a news report that came out that said, "Oh, New York has." the you know the lower lower gun violence gun gun deaths than the the year before and but it was noted that the murder rate was actually higher and more people were getting stabbed uh-huh and then it came out well that, didn't london see something similar um years back after uh well the Dunblane massacre when they basically confiscated all the handguns. Yes. So yes. Well, let me let me. I'll finish this one first. But I'll, but I'll, okay. furthermore, not only did stabbings go up and shootings go down, but the shootings never went down. The shootings had gone up as well. Just the police weren't reporting it. 
Mm-hmm. And, and and what you were getting at was after the Dunblane massacre, of course, that was that was the uh, the, the moment when uh, uh, the Brits banned handguns. Essentially, uh, I believe there may be some handguns that are allowed in England, but essentially, what we know as of, of as, as handguns and uh, many of the semi-automatic rifles were and shotguns were banned from the the United Kingdom uh, as a response to. Uh, uh, to to this this uh, horrible massacre that happened, well, in the following years after the the massive gun confiscation uh, that happened, uh, the uh, uh, the the uh, the shootings started going up, and then the shootings went down. Oh, there it just was a, a rebound effect, and then it was later found out that the Home Office in the UK was fabricating uh, the shooting data, and and was and was was artificially pressing it down. <laughs> Any more good news? Yeah. Actually, I mean, that, is that, I, actually the, so the news so, out of New Jersey is good news. So <laughs> uh, unadulterated. Uh just w- without without going too much, uh Steve just posted some pictures that he found. Oddball, do you recognize that carpet by chance? Uh I had the wrong window. Um n- no pictures are pretty tiny though yeah they are they are, they are very tiny uh steve steve using his magical detective skills has found uh uh found some of the the the, the guns uh the allegedly guns supposedly that, yeah that the, the shooter yeah. used uh mmp shield uh easy grip yeah that's a that's mmp easy a, a caltech P- is it a nine or a 380 can't it's quite a nine. read it. It's a nine millimeter. Okay, it's a nine. It's a yeah. nine. Yep. There's and then a Caltech sub two thousand, and then a weaved out uh, AR package. I cannot. Yeah. Tell. I With cannot the... tell if it's a poverty pony or not, but I'm gonna assume it probably is. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it looks one like of those evil uh, arm braces on. Yeah, it. it's a it's a stabilizing brace. Gun though it doesn't look like it has a particularly short barrel. No, though that looks like a 16-inch barrel, but it's it's not. If it has a stabilizing brace, I find it highly uh, it, likely. It's it might be a, like a 14-inch, right, or even a 12 with a muzzle device. So we we will see them. It's clearly crime scene photo, and the guns are decked out definitely in ways that have been consistent with spree killers. Yeah, um, I'm trying to figure out on the EZ what is that logo on the grip. I have no idea. It looks familiar. Mm-hmm. It, well, we've got a, there's a, uh, I mean, it's cross in the center, but it's five sided. Um, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to zoom in on, on there, my there, there appears to be part. some sort of glyph or something uh, on the, uh, on the front strap of the, of the grip I mean, as well. Yeah. Um, that's impossible to see at this angle. I mean, I that about- is. Yeah, it looks like a cross in just side, you know, inside of a five-sided there, figure. Yeah, there's, there's a zoomed in, but yeah, good luck f- figuring out what that is, unless if you already know what it is. Yeah, if it's if, yeah, if it's, uh, the chosen the chosen name of the shooters on the pistol grip, uh, or on the on the on the stabilizing brace on the rifle, and and yeah, and with it with with the guns decorated the way they are obviously the shooter had had these weapons for a good while right um, yeah but yeah sorry to sidetrack yeah but, no but yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, yeah, thanks, I, thanks I think and... we should probably from this point forward give this story a little bit of yeah. a leaving alone uh, yeah, until yeah, more, I, more I, actual I, data. I, I concur with that but again i'm I am also. I have been ever since, ever since this is this this story is really broken, and and, and information is going in. I I I I I, I can't help but uh, gather more and more. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying don't gather the information. It's just everything yeah. at this point is mm-hmm. alleged and supposition. And- correct, correct. And so yeah, we will we will uh, we will be speaking about it uh, probably at length. Unfortunately, uh, next week. Yeah. yeah. But either way, good, 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 good news from New Jersey that uh, yep. that this has gone through, and even better the fact that it combines with the um, the the May issue uh, side of it, uh, which is uh, 
uh, or shall issue side, side of it now. Thanks to, thank, thanks to, uh, to, to nice Serpa. Thank you again. Nice Serpa. You guys are amazing for this, this, this wonderful case that you brought forward against the state of New York. Um, yep. And thank you, Supreme court justices for taking it, mm-hmm. for deciding it. And thank you ever so much, justice Thomas for saying what you said. Yeah. And yeah. how you said it. Yeah, and yeah, got got rid of the test because it really is something that hasn't been wasn't thought before is the fact that, hey, when people I mean, you get the the idiots, just the idiots who talk about, oh, it was only for single shot muskets. Well, no. Yeah. No, that, because by could, that logic, the First Amendment doesn't cover the Internet. Yes. But f- furthermore, I mean, again, things like the puckle gun and the, the Jaron oh, yeah. air rifle were in existence. And, and we had people like, like revolvers uh, going back to the possibly 1500s. That, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually can't, can't wait to get my copy of Clockwork Basilisk. Oh, but, yes. But yes, the, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I've been having so much fun watching Ian's videos on that. Like it's one of those. I did not know about this thing here. Take hundreds of my dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, uh, it, it would be once that the book actually starts getting sent out, it would be nice if you could get Ian on again to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, some of the, the research and uh, that has that has become a standard ACP interview format, which is I interview somebody when when something is new because I want I want to create awareness and mm-hmm. then when and then when if they if if they are fortunate enough to have a success story, I want to interview them again to talk about their success. I think we can call Clockwork Basilic a success already. Oh, I mean he he hit it out of the park. <laughs> yep. And I was I was hoping that you'd be able to get uh a few minutes with Larry Correa about his book. Yeah, we're but we're working on was, it. <laughs> he's on everything right now and he's still trying to you know, do his day job of writer. Yeah, no, we're we're we are we are we are working on it, and my daughter desperately wants him to do a book tour into Massachusetts because she wants to meet him mm-hmm. so bad. Oh, I want him to come to my area. Yes. Not, I, I've met him already, but to see him again. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, that's that. That's absolutely the thing. But again, there there was there was glimmers of modern technology in 1791, <clears throat> and mm-hmm. furthermore. If you read any of the writings of Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, like these, as well as several of the others, yeah, but but specifically they were like super duper futurists. They were nerds. Yeah, as as, as were several of the others. I mean Hamilton. If you read some of Hamilton stuff, he was I, I actually, he was not behind them. I I I, I have not. So that's a, that's I, I I may I may have to look look up that. But uh, but yeah. But th- these guys were super duper nerdy, and so the idea that that's like that's like saying like oh, you know the if we were talking about like if we start doing space travel, oh, but you know, but faster than light travel didn't exist in you know in twenty thirty five, so therefore they wouldn't go through. Yeah, we all are talking about faster than light travel. <laughs> like, unless we say something about faster than light travel, like banning faster than light travel, no, we know it exists. We know it. Yeah. We, you know, we hope that someday it'll it, it will exist, and the the concept yeah. of it is not that far. Some of the earliest science fiction writers posited it. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think H.G. Wells or Jules Verne talked about faster than light travel directly, but I think. That it was hinted, but e- either way, the, anyway, the the idea that it would be limited to such minor technology is mm-hmm. is poppycock and, and absolutely and and balderdash. But furthermore, balderdash. Tom, there's always a good I word, love balderdash. Uh, but furthermore, Thomas is noting again that as new technology arised. So once the the metallic cartridge became a thing, so now we had breech loading weapons with metallic cartridges. Yep. Did 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 new laws come through? Did we start rethinking the Second Amendment? No. When when just when, expanded the definition. I mean, the definition of arms is still arms. Yeah. With, with yeah. Even if the technology changes. Yeah. When that when, when the Henry rifle came around, and so suddenly now we had a repeating rifle and a massive magazine. In an intermediate caliber. Yes. Cartridge, rather. Yep. So it was basically 
44 special. It, it was it was absolutely an assault rifle. It was absolutely an assault rifle in 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 the concept and com- uh, comparison of the of of the arms of the time. Oh yeah. And yeah, and so it was it was metallic cartridge, it was high capacity, it was it was fairly rapid to 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 uh, to cycle. Uh, yep. And, and, and with the Blakely box, it was fast to reload. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so you had all of those aspects to this firearm, and at no point did anybody start talking about, ooh, we're flying a little close to the sun here. It's really, really a very, very modern concept of banning specific firearms. Yeah. is It started to a lesser extent in the National Firearms Act, but it really didn't start kicking off until the 1980s with the California Assault Weapons Ban. And it was bunkum then, and it's bunkum now. Mm-hmm. I figure if you like Balderdash, you like bunkum too. I, I do like bunkum, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, and it was. It, I mean, it, it was all just. It, it was really the 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 fort the fort. Thomas mentions the fort. It was really the Fourteenth Amendment because oh, yeah. before then, gun control was just simply who could have guns and who could not have guns. Mm-hmm. And we simply and just to re- refresh, who couldn't have guns were basically anyone other than wealthy white people correct correct and it's hilarious at how many of these court cases come through oh, that God. that the that that the defense is the side of the government is bringing up these laws that said blacks couldn't own guns native americans couldn't own guns catholics jews you Italians. name you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you name, you name the, the minority yeah you name the oppressed group and and there there was a law on the books somewhere that said they couldn't have guns, and they're and using this as their defense. Justif- yeah, I love that they are trying to justify current abuses by referencing past abuses that are shunned. Yeah, so that's just brilliant. Yeah, so again, this is this is this is this is good news for uh, for New Jersey. Uh, in. In silly news, and I'm going to call it silly news right now because it's just been presented, and and as as you'll as you'll see from the main topic of the show, uh, I I don't think this is going to get very far. But uh, was it? Yeah, it was Chris Murphy. Chris Murphy. Oh yeah. Oh. Yep. Yep. He's a piece of work. He is a piece uh-huh. of work. This is a, this is, this is, this is a, this is a, uh, this is not a mag dump. So I will just say he is a piece of work from, uh, from, from the, uh-huh. the, the lovely state of Connecticut. Um, he, uh, he has presented a bill, um, as well as with a Democrat from Florida, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh, and of course, Richard Blumenthal. It's, well, the Senator Murphy and representative Alejandro Frost. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's both houses there. Yes, they have. Yeah, they're they are submitting a bill that will establish a uh, uh, what is it? What's it called? The uh, Office of Gun Violence Prevention. Yes. Ooh. Which. Yeah. If your spidey sense is tingling. Yeah, that's because this will literally be the government department of anti-gun. Yep. Well, it specifically says. To promote collaboration between administration officials, gun violence survivors, public health officials, mental health providers, and other stakeholders involved in the issue. And I'm sure in the fine print, explicitly excluding those who support gun freedom. I mean, there certainly is absolutely no mention of them whatsoever. And uh, knowing the people who actually drafted and submitted this bill, yeah, Yeah. that that makes a lot of sense. Yep. Well, remember, these are the same people who prevented steve scalise from attending an event on gun violence survivors yes yep yep steve. and also mentions here establish a centralized place within the federal government to address gaps in research offer policy recommendation enhance the national instant criminal background check system and give congress an annual report about gun violence yeah if that doesn't turn your stomach and let's be honest, a lot of those like gaps in research, I guarantee they're just going to be trying to work over the laws that we passed to prevent these anti-gun abuses of public funds and mm-hmm. quote unquote research. Yep. So, yeah, this is. This... You can do whatever research you want. You just can't use it to drive policy. 
Yes. So this is this is absolutely just essentially federalizing every town. More or less. And, and it would be interesting to see how much money Bloomberg has invested in this. Because you know he has a hand in it. Probably at this point in time, there's not a lot there's not a lot of skids to grease unless they're directly bribing people to vote it out of vote it out of committee. I, you know, at this point Well Blumenthal is a co sponsor and I mean it's not like he's not known for this. I I, I, I would find it very, very hard to believe that a member of every town wasn't consulted on mm-hmm. the drafting of this bill. But oh, yeah. as far as greasing of the skids, I don't know how much uh, was is, is needed to be done at this point in time. Honestly speaking, I think the greasing of the skids would just be that when this agency comes through, suddenly... Uh, you know, you, you know the the your 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 normie friends may not recognize any of them, but people like us might be like, "Oh, I know that one. Oh, I know that person." Oh. And we know Frost not directly. Frost is the youngest member of Congress at twenty six, and prior to his election in November, he served as the national organizing director for March for Our Lives. There you go. Oh, who who owns the trademark on that's a trademark group. Who owns the trademark on that? David Hogg? <laughs> da- 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 David Hogg doesn't own sugar. Well, and we also know from the uh current hearings that uh I believe it's Brady, the the uh one of the higher ups on in uh Brady has uh stated unequivocally that he regularly talks to the head of the ATF. Nope, that, that was that, that was every town. That was every. Oh, town. sorry, every town. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Is there that much difference? Other um, than name? I mean, ac- according to the Weird Beard cons- conspiracy theory, no. But yeah. but as far as the uh, the outward and open statements about how the organizations run, yes, they are they are very different. Um, but, Completely separate and unaffiliated. Yeah, but, absolutely. Ac- except that they're heavily affiliated. Well, though they are heavily affiliated, that's that, yeah. that's 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 open. That's my that's my evidence that I think that uh, that their debt was was secretly discharged, and uh, and and a certain somebody that uh, that we all that I may have mentioned earlier uh, is uh, might be have have a huge say in all actions that they're doing, um, and that is uh, it, it, and is that is because when. Obviously, Brady campaign was the big dog of the 90s. They were the people that had the federal assault weapons ban. They were the people that had the Brady background check. Uh, They were the ones that were really the enemy of the Second Amendment and the enemy of any gun owner in the United States. And they... I mean, they still are, but they're not alone. And then then Michael Bloomberg and to a lesser extent Tom Menino because uh, the late great mayor of Boston could neither read or write. So (laughs) I I have no earthly idea of what that poor... That sweet, sweet man could have done to contribute to to mayors against illegal guns besides his... uh, his, The X for his signature. Um... Well, did uh, was he one of the ones who was arrested for breaking some law while being? No, a- he was not. No, he was. He was. He was. So one, that's what he did for them. He was one of the charter members, though. Though he right, was, but the number of members of Mayors Against Illegal Guns who wound up getting arrested quite for a stuff, few, quite a few. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't get arrested for stuff while involved with Mayors not Against for Illegal lack Guns. Of, not for lack of trying. There was a, there was a number of uh, of very very suspicious scandals in the in the Menino. Uh, 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 government and it was just a it was it was a criminal racket uh but either way it all crumbles. it's boston yeah it's like e- chicago e- either either way he's he's dead and i'm not too displeased about that yeah. and well, you know uh, what the, you know what the difference between the the chicago way and the boston way is what the boston way's older <laughs> that's true i mean that is very true that is very true and it's lobster but uh but yeah the but but at when when but it started out when when mayors against illegal guns came in it was mayors against illegal guns was the one that worked with all the politicians they were getting the mayors together and they were lobbying congress and doing that sort of stuff and the brady campaign was the the hepcats they were the they were the ones having the galas and they were the ones going to to the uh, to the red carpet events and that sort of stuff and then 
when 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 uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns did a little little uh, name change into every town, suddenly they started doing red carpets and galas and and courting celebrities and getting those things. And uh, when that happened, suddenly all the Brady donors dr- started drying up, and the Brady campaign got themselves into big trouble. And yeah. Well, I mean, there's a there's a limited number of people who want to give large sums of money to yes. these organizations. Yes. No. No. Group group groups like the NRA back in their heyday. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to make comparisons of the NRA now, but yeah. uh, the NRA, the vast majority of their donations were twenty dollars and under. Their budget. Yeah. It was truly grassroots. Yes. Is is was people throwing them a couple of bucks. And the fact that they have hundreds of thousands of members and a bunch of them would send money that well, they, was, in their heyday, they had like five or six million members. Mm-hmm. And then you have and, and then you have uh, and then you would have a few wealthy donors uh, mm-hmm. giving large endowments to the NRA. But their bread and butter was small, small donations. And uh, to to go a little further, it's very similar to uh, how Bernie Sanders ran his campaign. Uh, supposedly, Bernie Sanders m- had all of his campaign money, which was not an insubstantial war chest, uh, from, no. from $20 or less donations. And so that was that was that's how the NRA works. Meanwhile, uh, Brady campaign in every town, they had a very, very small number of donors, but they were they were donating tens of thousands of dollars uh, instead. And so the budgets were similar. NRA actually was dwarfing it has been dwarfing every town all the way up until maybe recently. Uh, but the uh, uh, but again, the don the number of donors is very very small, and when you give them a challenge, they can only go so away. So you can't get an uh, necessarily an even split. And the Brady campaign was losing money like crazy. They were speaking out against every town, and then all of a sudden they changed their name from the Brady campaign to Brady, and I don't know what the actual name of the 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 group is anymore. I just call them the Brady campaign still. Uh, and they had the they switched over to a brightly colored logo, and uh, at the exact same time that uh, that uh, um, Americans for Responsible Solutions uh, changed their it merged with um, what is it the the Law Center Against Gun Violence, I forget, but it was one of the Joyce Foundation <laughs> uh, groups. Uh, but they merged with that, and they got a single name, brightly colored logo, and then suddenly. All the anti-gun events were every town, Giffords, and Brady. Yep. Hmm. Just well, seemed funny telling. how that works. Yeah, it just seemed telling. Convenient coincidence. So either way, they're trying to get themselves an office in uh, in Washington. Uh, we will be covering it. Like I suspect it's going to die in committee, mostly because of this next topic. Is uh, is uh, uh, this week? Uh, this week for us, it's going to be, it's a little bit, it, it, it happened on March 23rd. There was a hearing in the House of Representatives called ATF's Assault on the Second Amendment. When is enough en- enough? I love nice. that title. I love that title. <laughs> is is this the hearing where the, uh, the guy asked that really awkward question of the ATF representative regarding lying on 4473s? I believe it is. Let me see if I can find. That was a highlight reel when I saw that clip, I think, on Twitter. That was very, very wow. good. I believe it was. Let's and that, see. That caused more than a little giggling when I watched that for the first time. <laughs> Mar- yeah, March 23rd. Yes, that was. So, D- so David, I, I talk, you, you I were the one that shared it. it to me, and we, we and and for those that are that are that are patrons of the show, you probably heard us talking about it on the blooper reel. But what? But why, why don't you do I a little forget, recap? I forget which um, member of Congress it was. Uh, his name is uh, Representative Tiffany. I don't know his first name. Ah, thank you. So, Representative Tiffany was questioning the uh, the ATF face during these hearings and was asking him, so what's the penalty for lying on a 4473? I thought it was like five to 10 years. And the ATF representative comes back. Actually, that was changed recently. It's 15 years. Oh, okay. So if someone lies on a 4473, that's a crime, right? Absolutely. 
and they're supposed to go to jail for 15 years for lying on that 4473 about, for example, using a controlled substance, you know, various drugs and whatnot. Yes, that is correct. So why is Hunter Biden still walking around free? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. And, of course, yeah. the ATF... Rep- uh, the ATF face was like, I am not involved in that part of the uh, the activities of the agency. I can look into that for you. <laughs> but he yes, went pale white. I oh, mean, he went. He, he, went, went he, he was already very white. Yes, I mean, just from being he, there. But yeah, he he went negative for the whole thing. That the, he, oh, all he I can imagine is out. all I can imagine with that a- ATF rep is. Okay, you're the new guy. You're doing this. <laughs> or you pissed off the boss. You're doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this is, yeah. For, and for, for those that don't know, yeah, Hunter Biden owns at least two firearms. Uh, there's, well, one less. Right. Because uh, remember, his, his girlfriend uh, threw one of his in the trash. Yeah, I, and I don't know what happened because it, it was recovered. I don't know if it was returned to him or not. But, uh, but um, yes. But uh, yeah, not, not just not just his girlfriend, but his uh, but 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 his uh, his brother's widow, um, classy. Hey, um, you know, coming from a a Jewish background, I can't really ding him for marrying his brother's widow because that's biblical. I uh, know he never married her. Oh well, then that's a problem. He 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 definitely did some some stuff that Leviticus didn't uh, wasn't a fan of, but. Uh, while also while also siring the child down in uh, was it Georgia? I mean, Georgia? in fairness, is, is there much that Leviticus was a fan of? Um, eating kosher food, <laughs> but <laughs> valid. <laughs> but you had to think about it for a long time. <laughs> it wasn't a long time, but I had to think about it for a second. But the uh, yes. Uh, oh, by the way, the uh, I, I looked him up. Uh, the representative is uh, Tom Th- uh, Thomas P. Tiffany, uh, and he is from the great state of Wisconsin. So thank you so much. And I, I tossed the link into the show notes. Oh, sweet. To the uh, to the news article. Yes, it's Fox News, people. That's what I could find. I mean, yeah, just we we, we, we put a good mix. We put a good mix in there. Yep. But yeah, but the, but the, but but either way, Hunter Biden owns owned at least two firearms. I assume that he, at least one of them, he definitely bought on a forty four seventy three, and he checked off the bit. Uh, he he checked off the negative in the case of are you addicted to any controlled substances? Not not addicted. Are you a user of? Yes. Oh. And uh, mm-hmm. and 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 just to further incriminate uh, Hunter Biden, not only very much appears to be someone who heavily uses uh, illegal substances. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the actual statement on the 4473 is, I believe, are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any other controlled substance? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, Hunter. I had to answer that question today. Either way, Hunter absolutely lied on the 4473. And according to the ATF, he should be going to prison, but he is not. And- yep. Oh, I, I got to toss this in. Uh, Tiff- uh, Representative Tiffany or Senator or Rep- Rep. Representative Rep. Tiffany was interrupted during this questioning by another member of the uh, the panel and he finished up his statement by saying I understand why you do not want Mr. Wilcox, the member of the ATF to answer that question No, I, because Will, 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 Wilcox was uh, every town Oh, I thought Wilcox was the ATF. No, Will, Will, Wilcox is, is one of the directors of, of uh, Everytown. Okay. So I understand why you do not want Mr. Wilcox to answer that question, because there's a dual system of government in America, of justice in America. That's what's going on right now, and everybody's talking about it across America. There's two standards of justice that are going on. That's how he wrapped things up. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, oh, and that is now part of the congressional record. Yeah. Oh, yeah, There, there's been... Some uh, fangs have definitely come out in, in this hearing. Yeah, uh-huh. we, we will see. I, I gotta say, my one concern is the uh, is that will this be all just show? Oh, oh it, it will probably because most likely for for it to actually have effect, 
you you have to actually get it uh get something passed through and mm -hmm. since uh and i don't think that there are nearly enough uh pro gun or uh, frankly pro fairness uh democrats in uh congress to actually do to, to actually uh do anything i wish that wasn't the case but and so uh, we we talked we talked about this uh, um, we talked about this originally is that the uh, the the every town uh, group uh, let's see what is his name uh, Rob Wilcox he's the senior director of policy for every town and uh, he was questioned by uh, Jim Jordan. Uh, and Jim Jordan uh, questioned him if he was talking to the ATF prior to the ban on pistol stabilizing braces. And it took him a whole lot of work to do it, but he ended up did convince, uh, get him to agree that he was in, that was indeed working with the ATF director as far as um, banning pistol stabilizing braces. Mm -hmm. which they continuously say, oh, there was a change in technology, but it's the exact same thing. And when he did, and when he admitted to it, it was, uh, of course I've been talking to the head of the ATF. Yeah, because of course you are. Because, you know, how, how many uh, lobbying groups have the good fortune to have the direct ear of the director of whatever organization they they're uh, mm -hmm. they're lobbying. Yep, and uh, yeah. So the you've got all of the you've got all the. There's been a bunch of like s just absolute savage takes. Uh, let's see the 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 uh, uh, essentially the opening salvo was. Uh, was essentially saying that we should defund the ATF, which I yes, guess and? yes, yeah, it it sounds great. I I don't know how it would work logistically, but I still no. would be willing to give it a shot. Yeah, uh, it's right up there with the people saying that we need to repeal the NFA. Well, yes, we do, but it's not going to happen. Um, a man can dream. Yes, well, absolutely. That is my dream on, as well. But, but but it's it's incremental is much more likely to be effective. Right. But also uh, actually repealing the NFA would actually be removing laws from the books while disbanding the ATF just means some other government or organization does that does that job. Most the likely the on most likely the honest and trustworthy FBI. Did did you hurt yourself? A little bit. <laughs> A little bit. I think I threw up in my mouth. I mean, I'm I'm glad I'm uh, a couple hundred miles away from you, so you don't get so I don't get any uh, lightning. Well, it it would come through the head fat. Sorry, but oh yeah, I think that right under my ribs that hurts. <laughs> oh. But yeah, the the uh... I'm a good boy. <laughs> oh wow, good thing I'm not Pinocchio. Uh, yeah, and we, we, <laughs> would, have put, we, we would have put my nose right through my monitor. I I, I have also a clip in there of. Uh, 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 Representative Cicilline from I don't know where he is from. Uh, David Cicilline, uh, Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Oh, shock! Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> another an, an, another New England bastion of gun control. Um, but yeah, but he talked about how he was asking essentially only the anti-gun experts because don't talk to the pro-gun ones and uh you was, won't like the answers yeah exactly was talking was talking uh mostly to to mr wilcox about how oh you know women can't use guns to defend themselves because women are most often the the victim of uh domestic abuse and other just non sequiturs and lies i have several women that would like to get that guy alone in a room. Mm -hmm. And I, I, well, I, he's retiring from Congress on June 1st. So oh, they'll have opportunity at that point. Uh, That's not a soon shame. Enough. Yeah. Would have been better if he'd retired, I don't know, a few, five, ten years yes. ago. 
Yeah, but either way, yeah. the, the, there's 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 some there, there's some juicy YouTube videos in there mm-hmm. of going through and. Oh, actually, and- that reminds me that his video. I just this one story was back when we were still living up in New York. It was fairly early on when my wife and I were dating. We were still living in Albany before we bought the the house, and we're watching a, a news report and a Democratic member of the House of Representatives. The topic was gun control, and he made a statement, paraphrasing because you know we're we're talking twenty years ago almost, but basically he said that. If women had guns, they would just shoot their man when it was that time of the month. Ooh. Ooh. Democrat. Right. Democrat from the from the House of Representatives. And the woman who became my wife, who was kind of she wasn't anti gun, but she wasn't really pro gun, had a oh no you didn't moment. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd been telling her about the kind of lies that the anti gunners tell. But right. she hadn't actually witnessed it in real time. And that was just, oh. <laughs> and Oddball, I don't know if you've seen my wife angry. I haven't, no. It's not loud. No, I, I can imagine. Which is more frightening. It is she, When she gets angry, it is usually very calm. There might be a burst of profanity and then quiet. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, then uh, various people who have violent careers run away. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling, Steve, that you kind of have a good idea of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, well, you've met my wife. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Quiet when angry is not, however... <laughs> where I would go with Panya, vocal. Mm. But oh, anyway, unicorn would just you know give you a nice solid chop to the throat. You'd be <laughs> good old throat chop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, no. yeah she... I, I've told stories uh, on the uh, the podcast before about my wife and the listen speech. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard the, any of those, Steve. Yeah, it's it's been a while, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but All, cl- twenty years, and I still have not been the recipient of one. Yeah, I and mean, <laughs> Unicorn and I have only been married a couple years now. But if she, yeah, she she's not a she's not a talker. She'll just she'll just end you right there. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I I just have to have I have a, I gotta have a dozer or something on standby. You know, yep. the, mm-hmm. the pieces or. Well, do you remember? Uh, weird oddball do you remember what Aaron said about my wife and and who's more dangerous and why oh oh yeah <laughs> I think her quote was something along the lines of at worst you'd just kill me she'd make sure it hurt the whole time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah and, and she'd probably make you want to do it to yourself just so that it would stop <laughs> There's a reason for that phrase. The female of the species is deadlier than the male. But I, 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 I want to wallow in a little bit more joy here. Is that <laughs> during okay. the during the um, uh, uh, dur- during the hearing, there was a, 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 a an outburst, and someone charged in, spouting nonsense, and I recognized them. And and were they oh, yeah. were they allowed to speak? Nope. Were they asked to leave? It was an insurrection. Were they yes. removed and arrested? Uh, yes, they were. It was uh, well, at least Manuel Oliver, uh, the 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 the, so- the father of Joaquin Oliver, who was killed uh, killed in the Parkland shooting. And and why wasn't David Hogg with him? That's uh, just cause, not supportive. Because he was retired. <laughs> He was, he was going to have a cigarette, take a nap, and then fire his missile. Yes, he was. He was. He was too. He was too busy making pillows that no one will buy. Um, but uh, or, or at least talking about making pillows that no one will buy. Yes, no. Nobody's talking about the pillows. <laughs> he's not even talking about them anymore. I don't. I don't have no. no idea. I don't. Well, I don't think he's part of it anymore. I think he backed away. But because he saw that it was a complete and utter failure. Yes, but e- either way, yeah, Manuel Excellent. Oliver, who uh, who has uh, some heavy ties to uh, Bloomberg and March for Our Lives, and uh, and 
and took money from the FBI because of their incompetence uh, was uh, was 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 there and got arrested for mm-hmm. the for the second time. So uh, I think he's fallen out of Bloomberg's favor because he keeps pulling these goofy stunts and getting arrested and and embarrassing the organization i recognize him because i run a uh a a, a pro-gun podcast and i do weird audio fisks of of anti-gunners that say stupid things and uh and i I believe i've done i've done manuel oliver i certainly did i I certainly did his depiction of his son that was the that was the halloween episode with mm-hmm. the just the complete and utter like non sequitur him speaking for his dead son through CGI. CGI. He's a Oh, that was creepy as hell. Yeah, he's he is a deeply troubled individual. The fact that he's constantly attacking the NRA and constantly attacking gun owners, but he took money from the FBI because the FBI had admitted failure. Unlimited opportunities to put this guy behind bars before he hurt anybody. And then he went in and killed a bunch of people in the school and the police were cowards and would not enter so that the killer was actually arrested across the street in a park. Uh, And while he was getting arrested, the EMTs were not allowed into the school because the school hadn't been cleared yet because the, the shooter hadn't been apprehended. It's not good. No. Uh, and Although it's watch... still better than Uvalde. Yes. Did you watch the uh, video uh, of the outburst in the gallery? Yes. And then, uh, and then, and then him getting prone, proned out in the hallway. Well, and um, let's hear the uh, subcommittee chair, uh, Representative Pat Fallon uh, from Texas, uh, they gave him several warnings and and paying the gavel several times and a few times actually asked so is the capitol police going to do their jobs oh it uh, wasn't just manuel oliver patricia oliver was also removed correct yes yes mm-hmm. and uh representative fallon was quoted as saying is this an insurrection will they be held to the same uh mm-hmm. i don't want another january 6th do we right uh, but and and also questioned whether the Capitol Police were going to do their jobs or not, because it they they were uh, shouting for a for an extended period of time. Um, now, of course, it was up to the Capitol Police once they were esco- escorted into the hall or not as to uh, in, into the hall as to whether or not it was just. Yeah, you go home now, or <laughs> you're getting the cuffs. And uh, well, Manuel Manuel Oliver uh, tried uh, decided to uh, make sure that the police decided that yeah, you're you're getting cuffed. Ah, uh, nothing like a feel good story. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got uh, I got a, I got one another another really good feel good story. I like this, and I I, I wanted to put this after all this talk of the federal gun violence prevention office and this, all this talk against the, uh, the, the ATF, but uh, governor Yunkin of, uh, of Virginia signed a bill into law that allows you to take a $300 tax credit when buying a gun safe gun safe or other lockable gun container. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty broad. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that could be one of those little boxes that you stick in your car with the, the steel cable all the way up to a full fledged security cabinet. Well, and that will uh, that does have the potential for seriously helping out uh, folks that are not that I either don't have a whole lot of money or are just getting into guns, mm-hmm. uh, at least getting you know, one of those, uh, oh shoot. I, I have one of that brand, uh, in, in my storage room that I don't use anymore, but, but the, uh, the locking cabinets. That, yeah. Yeah. Stack on? Yeah. The, the, the cheap stack on locking cabinets that is, is that a good and proper gun safe? No, but, is it better than leaving it up out uh, leaning in the corner? 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And will it stop, oh, 70, 80% of uh, folks that just bust in the door and grab what they can? Grab what they can? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So I was just looking at the article on this, and weird, not only is this a feel-good story for the headline, but it's a feel-good story for something that we've been saying for many years. Uh, Delegate Alfonso Lopez, Democrat Arlington, the bill's sponsor, said at a committee hearing, this bill is not about requiring people to do anything. It's not about banning anything. It's not taking anything away. This bill simply gives a tax credit to tie an incentivize something that many law-abiding gun owners already do. That was from a Democrat in Virginia. At the bottom of the article, it mentions that the legislation was backed by both the National Rifle Association and gun control groups like Giffords, Brady, and Everytown. So clearly it's going to fail. It's signed into law. It's done. Oh, but, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he. That, the, the oh, story yes, is that Governor Young can sign it. The governor signs it, yeah. But this is truly bipartisan, positive legislation. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does say that uh, the non-refundable credit can be claimed on state tax returns starting in 2024. It can only be applied to eligible equipment purchased from federally licensed firearm dealers. So if you order one of those car safes off of Amazon, you can't get the credit. Right. And the credit cannot be applied to the cost of purchasing a firearm itself, which, you know, makes sense. That's not what it's for. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. But the fact that it truly was bipartisan is really good yeah i and and i'm sorry for that i'm just i'm so used to any bill that actually makes sense from both sides of the aisle being shot down for reasons oh yeah no i Uh, i 100 percent i you've heard me do the same thing but yeah that that's that's the kind of thing that i think we all would like to see more of is functional effective legislation with backing from both sides of the aisle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, and I think I, that's 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 all I've got on the uh, on the list. Is there anything else somebody else uh, missed? Uh, no, I, don't I got nothing. Good. I don't think I've seen anything else. And, you know, I just have the uh, some of the work stories. And but... then, yeah, just just before that, David, you were asking me a question. Oh crap! I was. Yes, <laughs> it's it's about it's about well I will I will I will I will lead into it is that uh, at the time of this recording oh yes now I remember California still has yay brain brain let me California let my, let my brain a, let my brain get the words out let my brain get the words out okay. or they'll be gone again so currently in California there is movement to declare the uh, the the gun roster for purchase unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. Yay! Yes, it, it's moving forward. It's not a done deal yet. But my question was, if it gets to, I'm assuming the federal judge for the ninth, whatever level before the Supreme Court, the ninth circuits, I guess. Mm-hmm. And if they say yes, this is unconstitutional according to NYSERPA, so it's got to go, and the state does not appeal, so it does not go to the Supreme Court. What effect will that likely have if any on the massachusetts roster so what you're saying is that the the california roster gets upheld or it gets struck down gets struck down okay but but the state doesn't appeal to the supreme court so it stops at the the yes. uh the circuit level so what what what'll happen right now is if nothing else happens then uh i think it gets referred down for um it gets it gets it gets referred down essentially just for review, uh, but then, uh, and and then, the 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 action is in effect unless there's a denial somewhere. Um, and right, so, so that's what'll happen out in California. But what effect would that have on the Massachusetts roster? And the short answer is nothing immediately, but mm-hmm. the good side is that it does become something that Massachusetts can reference in our own challenge. And possibly get faster results because, again, more ammo to take to court. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I. I. So, so ideally, be a supporting element for 
a lawsuit by California citizens, uh, by Massachusetts citizens against that state's roster. Ideally, and I, I kind of put this in scare quotes, the best thing to, to happen Ooh. would be for California to appeal it. And it goes, it goes up the ladder until eventually it reaches to reaches the, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it reaches the, the, the Supreme court and then, and then the Supreme court strikes it down in which case it would apply to Massachusetts. So, yeah, so it's, it's more ammo in the event, in, in the event that it just, that California gets its roster struck down. That certainly is a good sign for us getting ours struck down. But if it goes all the way up to the Supreme Court and they rule, that's the law of the land. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am rapidly turning into a pumpkin. So, so I, I will, uh, I will dive into the outro, uh, and say that th- we got to thank each and every one of our listeners thank you so much for listening we really do appreciate you what's the point of doing a podcast if no one's entertained uh i mean at the very least we're yes. but it's better to have listeners that are entertained too and well, hey, so we can entertain ourselves <laughs> he's not wrong <laughs> And so uh, says the guy who just bought a new gun. <laughs> also says the guy who stayed in a hotel room alone. I'm just saying, <laughs> I've stayed in hotel rooms alone yeah. as well. There, there's no, there's no mini bar here, and frankly, the uh, table channel selection sucks because I am in the middle of nowhere. But you, but you have internet. I'm just saying. <laughs> in, internet True. and imagination. Yes. True. But. But we also- and I will point out that this is the first gun I've bought all year. Good boy, David. I haven't bought a single gun. Oh, wait, no. Maybe I did. I haven't bought a single gun this year. The, 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 the Remington goes in came in last year. I've only bought one gun this year. Oh, what gun was that? Not for lack of trying. Hey, fair. The, the uh, 10mm high point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I want it. It was so funny. I actually asked uh, Steve Gutowski had the uh, May on, who is, who is one of the defendants in the case, um, and uh, he was asking, so what are you going to get if the, if the California band goes away? And uh, he said uh, probably uh, P365 and, uh, and, a, uh, and a 2011, uh, both sides of the spectrum. And I was definitely thinking, like, like High point. I probably would be somewhat similar. I'd probably, I'd probably want to get something really, really cheap, like an Altor. And then also something really, really expensive, like a, I don't know, like a, a, Dan, a Dan Wesson a D, a DWX. But you, you want one of those? Yes. But who, who, who is spectacular? Co-host the handgun radio. Oh my god, the handgun roster is a blister on my rear. Um, my only concern is if the Massachusetts handgun roster goes away, how much would you spend in the first year? Um, would you like me to log into my bank account? <laughs> <laughs> how much is mommy gonna let? It's true. not about how much mommy. I I, I I have an allowance. It is it, it is <laughs> it, it is collecting and uh, it is going up. And, uh, and I will I will go walk into my local gun shop and I will slap it on the table and say, "Keep handing me guns until it's gone." <laughs> You know who we're glad is not gone? Our, our patrons. Our yes. lovely, lovely patrons. These guys really do help keep the lights on. This this, this podcast costs money to, to, to run, and uh, yeah, it's it, it would be a shame if it was it was slowly draining our bank accounts like our gun budgets. And so, thank you so much to our lovely supporters on Patreon. But it's not a charity. We don't we don't, we don't ask for charity. We don't ask for alms. We sell you stuff. So there is. Uh, there, you make it worth your while. That's right. There's an early release of the podcast. That's a buck. Like that's just help, help us out. We'll give you a, a little something. I don't know how big of a draw that is. I certainly know that I get, get contacted by lots of listeners on Friday or in there as they're listening to the show. So there are absolutely people that get the, get the enjoy the Friday release of the podcast. But the one I hear the most from are the people. People love the people. We, we, we were talking for a while before this show started. We're going to probably talk a little bit after the show's over. 
and uh, and, and and that stuff uh, and and any mistakes and groups that happen in between get uh, get added to the show uh, and, uh, for, for the blooper reel and, and and people enjoy it. I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, also, oh, yeah. and uh, I, I just posted something in, in chat that we will definitely be talking about after after we wrap this up. Oh my yes. <laughs> And uh, somebody post shared this screenshot, which actually we're not going to be discussing anymore until after the show. Yeah. Okay. But either way, there's also the ACP film tracks. We have we have movie night for, 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 for ACP, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of movies in there, and, uh, and, and so you can you can watch those movies with us because we've got a recording for Pokemon Judy. As a matter of fact, there's a certain, there's a movie that I want to watch. And, uh, Oh, you guys recorded it when I wasn't around, and so <laughs> I may end up watching it with you guys as well. <laughs> and of course, there's also the AC Mag Guns, which are very similar to these uh, roundtables, but much more free time, uh, uh, free form, and uh, we talk about a, a wider degree of subjects. As a matter of fact, I try to, I try to steer us away from the Second Amendment because we cover that every week on, on here. So. Uh, the the ACP Mag Dump is uh, is 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 a, a a great show to uh, to add to your podcast listening. And I'll I'll keep it. Maybe also remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts. As far as I know, that's the one that gets you the, the ratings. Also, while you're at it, the Brady campaign now, Red Blue and Brady, they have their podcast, and very few people have reviewed it. Leave them an honest review. I think they. they They've earned it from you. If you're if you're leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, go over to the Brady Campaign and uh, give them a review as well. And uh, I, of course, have my blog. That's uh, weirdworld.com. And uh, also, I'm sorry, did you say that properly? That's w e e r d world.com. And of course, Erin Paulette is not with us, but I will I, I will pimp her out. She's of course the proprietor of. Uh, of uh, Pink Pistols and Operation Blazing Sword, and uh, you can find all of her pertinent information on uh, linktree.com. Or it, uh, uh, it's it's linktree slash Aaron Paulette. That's linkter.e forward slash Aaron Paulette. All one word. And, uh, we're, we're, and uh, uh, David, where can people find you? Hi, David. Uh, well, of course, I'm I'm here regularly. I'm also a frequent guest, though not frequent enough, on Handgun Radio. I've made one appearance on Geeks, Gadgets, and Guns, and they're reconsidering their life choices after that. <laughs> uh, regular contributors to Blue Collar Prepping, which is bluecollarprepping.blogspot.com, and we're always looking for more contributors there. I am also Z Published also. And I have stories in anthologies under my author name, which is Brenna Bach, B-R-E-N-A, B-O-C-K. And I've now started putting stories out under my my actual name, David Bach. Uh, the most recent one is particularly exciting. It's a story in an anthology called Space Cowboys, and they actually put my name on the cover. I am no longer Team and More. Team Am- and More Amaracus. Nice. Very, very exciting day for any author. So please, please buy, read, and leave honest reviews. Those really help. And uh, Oddball, where can people find you? Uh, well, uh, right here. And uh, I am often Shanghai in Shanghai Gun Radio. Uh, I think that's a unique definition of Shanghai. I mean, it, it kind of is. <laughs> we, we really do sometimes say, there, Oddball, join us. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a drink. <laughs> uh, and uh, I have a blog at gunscarstech.com and you can uh, reach me at oddball at gunscarstech.com or on the Assorted Caliber uh, Facebook group and Steve, tell people where they can, they can find you and your lovely endeavors alright um, well, uh, primarily I can be found at merchantofboom.us uh, that's where I sell guns uh, Unicorn sells coffee at uh, sanctuarycoffee.co uh, I'll, if, if you guys want me on your podcast or if you like having me around you know, just you know, yell it weird um, I don't know how much I can contribute um, 
I'd love Hail to the Trunk to from the Trunk to come back. Uh, I'm just you know, free ice cream machines kind of broken. Um, but maybe some folks can inspire me with a little more creativity. But uh, you can buy guns from me at MerchantBloom.us. Uh, my coffee at SanctuaryCoffee.co uh, from from the wife. That'll all go to uh, handling things like uh, foster care costs. Uh, stuff like that. We give ten uh, percent uh, from coffee purchases to local child advocacy. So we're fighting things like uh, human trafficking and and stuff of that ilk. Um, and maybe I'll start posting on on the Tiki Takis because that's apparently very popular these days. But that's that may ha- they ma- that may happen in the coming days or weeks or whatever. But yeah, I sell guns. I sell coffee. And occasionally, you Yahoo let me back in here to the cage. So, uh, by the way, ha- uh, do you have any merchandise with your Merchant of Boom logo on it yet? Ooh, good I, question. I do not. I do not. I'm working on a on a couple designs. Um, I, I'd love for somebody to. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody that I could use, like uh, Printify, that I could connect to merchantaboom.us where I can just drop ship shirts because, you know, having an in-stock inventory of random t-shirts is not something I oh, do. No, no, oh, no. yeah, no, I understand that. But but that that logo is just freaking awesome. It is a good logo. That, the, uh, the funny Especially story, for gearheads. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the logo actually came from the guy... That's responsible for all the branding for Refactor Tactical. Okay. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't do graphic design anymore. He's actually in the family's uh, baking business now. But um, but yeah, he's the one that came up with the uh, MOB logo. He actually also came up with my investigative company logo well over a decade ago now. Um, but yeah, he's he's who I go to for. Uh, design um but i do have a couple ideas for some swag and some stickers um but yeah i mean i could um, do I could do sticker things real easy because that that's yeah. cheap um maybe patches a um, couple of the ones that i've heard of for for shirts uh one of them is printify yep yep and then there's also um oh crap what's it? bunker branding bunker branding <laughs> um Spreadshirt. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you're familiar with those already? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the Unicorns uh, Coffee Endeavor. Uh, we do branding uh, for for it through through Printify because they're attached to Shopify where we do the billing for all that stuff. Okay. But because okay. because MOB is one of those uh, forbidden topics, um, as I like to call it. You know, I can't I can't advertise and. Yeah, you know, social stuff. media is really kind of picky about the stuff that I produce on social media. So, you know, a lot right. of the particular vendors don't don't touch that stuff. So, uh, my tech provider, uh, which integrates with all my distributors and stuff like that, they worked with, they tried to set a deal with Printify a couple years ago, but I guess that never that never happened. So, but yeah, I mean, if there if there's call for something like stickers and patches, I'm I'm game. I'll, I'll see if I can. Window hear. clings, refrigerator magnets. Yep. Yep. Well, I will. We're boring our, our our listeners, and so I will leave it at our side hustles are clearly assorted, and so is our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Weird, weird. I think Aaron would be proud of you for that one. Yeah. I. 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 I or at I, least not embarrassed of you for that one. Take what you can get. <laughs> <laughs>